Japan, from 1467 to 1615, was a land of ceaseless turmoil and strife, known as the Sengoku period. This era was rife with battles, political schemes, and sweeping changes. Samurai warriors were in high demand, serving the powerful lords called daimyo. They lived by a strict code known as Bushido, and this period saw a profound shift in their culture, changing Japanese history forever. Now, picture a man from a far-off land arriving in Japan during this chaotic time. His presence caused a sensation, capturing the attention of one of Japan's most powerful warlords. Join us as we journey through the story of Yasuke, the first foreign samurai. Becoming a samurai in Japan was no easy task. Samurai were a distinct warrior class who served the daimyo, trained from childhood. By 1603, they made up only 10% of Japan's population. One couldn't just pick up a sword and join this elite group. To become a samurai, one typically had to be born into a samurai family, where rigorous training in martial arts, strategy, and the Bushido code of ethics began at a young age. In rare cases, a non-samurai could be granted the status through exceptional bravery or service to a daimyo. Yasukai arrived in Japan in 1579 as an attendant to Jesuit missionary Alessandro Valignano. Standing tall and strong, he immediately caught the eye of Oda Nobunaga, a powerful and ambitious warlord. Historical records suggest that Nobunaga first learned about Yasuke around March 23, 1581. Yasukai's arrival at a Jesuit church drew immense interest from the locals. They had never seen anyone like him before. The commotion led Nobunaga, who was nearby at the Honoji Temple, to summon Yasuke. Nobunaga was fascinated by Yasuke's robust build and dark skin, which was rare in Japan at the time. Nobunaga initially thought Yasuke's skin was painted black and ordered his servants to scrub him, only to realize his skin was naturally dark. Impressed, Nobunaga hosted a feast in his honor. During one of their early encounters, a group of samurai attempted to test Yasuke's strength by engaging him in physical combat. Yasuke's ability to fend off multiple opponents impressed Nobunaga, who recognized not just his physical prowess, but also his composed demeanor under pressure. Nobunaga saw in Yasuke a warrior of exceptional potential, and in 1581, Nobunaga granted Yasuke the honor of becoming a samurai, the first non-Japanese person to receive such an honor. During the Sengoku period, Oda Nobunaga spent his life waging a campaign to unify Japan. He managed to bring half the country under his rule, providing stability to chaotic regions. Japan's unification after his death was largely due to the foundations he laid. Yasukai's arrival was sensational. He drew crowds because of his size and presence. Many believed he was a divine visitor due to their familiarity with dark-skinned Buddhist statues. His presence caused such a stir that buildings collapsed under the weight of spectators and riots broke out in Kyoto as people tried to see him. Yasuke had to seek refuge from the crowds inside the Jesuit church. Despite the chaos of the Sengoku period, Yasuke quickly adapted to his new life. He learned Japanese customs and language, earning a private residence and a katana sword. Nobunaga treated him like family, granting him money and status. Yasuke even dined with Nobunaga, a rare honor for any samurai. Yasuke also met key Japanese figures like Tokugawa Ieyasu, who would later found the Tokugawa Shogunate and rule a unified Japan from 1603 to 1867. However, Yasuke's encounters weren't always pleasant, especially when he crossed paths with Akechi Mitsuhide. The unpleasantness of their encounter stemmed from Mitsuhide's deep-seated resentment and ambition. As Nobunaga's trusted general, Mitsuhide harbored jealousy and a sense of rivalry towards anyone who held Nobunaga's favor. Yasukai, with his unique background and emerging prominence in Nobunaga's court, became a symbol of Nobunaga's unpredictable and inclusive leadership, which did not sit well with Mitsuhide's traditional views. This animosity culminated during Mitsuhide's rebellion in 1582, when he betrayed Nobunaga and attacked him at the Honoji Temple. With unmatched ferocity, Yasukai wielded his katana, cutting through Mitsuhide's men with a blend of raw power and precise technique. His strikes were swift and deadly. One particularly dramatic moment saw Yasuke disarming a samurai with a deft flick of his wrist, only to pivot and block an incoming strike from another assailant, demonstrating his remarkable agility and combat prowess. Amidst the chaos, Yasukai's deep voice bellowed commands to rally the remaining defenders, and at one point, he managed to lift a fallen banner bearing Nobunaga's crest, waving it defiantly to inspire his comrades becoming a beacon of hope. 
Despite Yasukai's Herculean efforts and the bodies of Mitsuhide's men piling around him, the overwhelming numbers began to take their toll and he couldn't prevent Mitsuhide's forces from overwhelming them. Nobunaga, realizing the severity of his situation after being wounded by an arrow, committed seppuku to avoid capture. Yasukai then fled to Azuchi Castle with Nobunaga's son, Oda Nobutada. They intended to defend the castle, but Mitsuhide's men overwhelmed them. Nobutada also committed seppuku, and Yasukai, following Western tradition, handed over his sword to the victors. Historians suggest this might be because Yasukai might not have fully embraced or understood the deeply ingrained cultural expectation of committing seppuku, the ritual suicide that was expected of samurai in defeat. Instead, following Western traditions, he chose to surrender. Mitsuhide, considering Yasuke's ignorance of Japanese customs and his foreign status, spared his life and sent him to the Jesuit church. After this dramatic period, Yasuke disappeared from historical records. His origins remain uncertain, with some sources suggesting he came from Congo, Angola, Ethiopia, or Mozambique. His age and birth name are also mysteries, with various accounts providing different information. Yasuke wasn't just a warrior, he was a towering figure, standing six feet two inches tall, much taller than the average Japanese man of the time. His strength and stature made him an intimidating presence on the battlefield. One remarkable example of his physical prowess was when he reportedly lifted and threw a fully armored samurai off his horse during combat, an incredible feat of strength that left onlookers in awe. Wielding an odachi, a long katana, Yasuke showcased his formidable skills and power. One notable feat was during a skirmish where he cleaved through multiple enemy spearmen with a single swing of his odachi, demonstrating his incredible strength and mastery. His ability to handle such a large weapon with ease and precision made him a fearsome opponent, and his presence alone could turn the tide of a battle. Yasuke's story, though shrouded in mystery, has endured through the centuries. His legend has been revived in modern times through books and stories, capturing the imagination of people worldwide. Yasuke's journey from a distant land to becoming the first foreign samurai is a testament to the incredible, often surprising, intersections of cultures and histories.